In this video, I'll show you how to test a 120 volt residential outlet for voltage problems, including a compromised hotline or neutral using either a traditional voltmeter, a low Z meter, or a voltage pen. This video is intended for professionals that have a need to conduct such tests. For safety reasons, I recommend wearing rubber gloves and safety glasses at all times. According to this voltage tester, this is a properly working outlet. However, when I plug this light into it, the light doesn't work. And look what happened to the voltage tester. The lights went out on it. And if I plug this into another outlet, it works just fine. Let's try plugging it back into this one. Same thing. So what's going on with this outlet here? As it turns out, this outlet has a loose upstream connection. Notice also, when I plug these needs of this multimeter into this outlet, I'm reading 122 volts, which is what we would expect to read. But when I plug this light in, it drops down to just a couple of volts. So this is a compromised voltage source and the issue is being manifested under load. When I pull the light bulb out, it goes back up to 122 volts. So why is that? As it turns out, this outlet has a loose upstream connection on the hot side over here, which would be this right slot. And because it fails under load, this is just a small load, but it drops down to a couple volts. Now how do we tell? that is loose connection on the hot side. Well, ground and neutral are bonded together in the breaker box. So you could use ground as a reference in this case. You can use ground to reference the hot. And we're getting about four volts. We should get 120 volts from ground to hot. So that means that we put this load in here that hot is dropping down to about four volts with respect to ground. If it was neutral, the neutral would rise. If it's not, neutral is still down pretty close to zero volts with respect to ground, which it should be. So this tells us we have a loose upstream hot. If I pull this light out, it goes back up to 120 volts. So that's a loose upstream hot. Somewhere between here and the breaker box. So I want to show you how you can test for a bad neutral by having a load in the socket. And as you noticed, the voltage dropped down to around 4 volts. So if we had a, if we have a floating neutral, what happens, or a loose neutral, that neutral is going to go up to the level of hot, because, that, because if hot is okay, it's going to stay at 120 volts. And if the difference between hot and neutral is only 4 volts, then that would mean that neutral is, is, is at somewhere around 116 volts. Neutral should always be at 0 volts, very close to 0 volts, give or, give or take a few tenths of a volt. Um, so anyway, yeah, so what we can do is we can put one lead into ground and one lead into neutral. And it's showing 118 volts. So neutral is obviously way above the ground level. Should not be up there. So that tells us we have a, float, uh, a loose neutral. This is actually not an open hot or an open neutral. This is a compromised outlet in the sense that we have a loose upstream connection, but it's not completely open. So that's why we're able to read some voltage there. And we're able to read full voltage when the light is unplugged. So how do we know what's going on here? How do we test this? Let's go over to low Z mode here. Low Z mode puts a resistance, or impedance if you will, since we're talking about AC circuits. But it puts a resistance of about 3200 ohms at the measurement point. So it's like putting a 3000 ohm resistor across these leads. So when we plug this in now, look what happens. Whereas before we were reading 122 volts, we're now reading about 7 volts. So the internal resistance of the low Z mode has caused this, the issue with this outlet to manifest itself. So that's how you can tell that you have a bad outlet, even though a traditional voltmeter, which when we put this on traditional volt reading mode, 
that tells you that you have a good outlet, 121 volts there, and the voltage tester tells you it's good. This is not a good outlet, so as we use low Zemo, we can tell that. Now, how do we go a step further and determine, well, is this a problem with, is this a loose neutral? Or is this a loose hot? How do we know that? Well, so if you check from ground to hot, you should read 120, 120 volts, right? Which is what we're reading on, on regular volt reading mode. However, if you put it on low Z mode, ground to hot, ah, there we go. We're reading about 7 volts. So that means that it's not neutral that's, that's, that is compromised. It's not neutral that's moving away from ground. It's hot that's moving away from hot. It's hot that's going down toward ground. So by doing this, putting the low resistance between hot and ground, that tells us the hot line is not able to supply enough current even to overcome this, this 3,000 ohms of resistance here. So that tells us we have a loose upstream connection on the hot side because the hot side is fails. It fails under load, the hot side does. Now, just to note, if this was a GFCI outlet, GFCI outlet, you could not do this because the low resistance, the low input resistance of this meter would cause too much current to flow from hot to ground, and that would cause the GFCI outlet to trip. So you can't do that. So what would you do in that case? You could just put it on regular voltage reading mode or low Z. And you can put that load back in there. And then you can check from hot to neutral and see if that pulls neutral up. Is it pulling neutral up to 120 volts? Then you know you have a loose neutral. But if it doesn't pull neutral up to 120 volts or thereabouts, or doesn't pull neutral significantly away from ground, then that tells you that it's not neutral that's compromised. Neutral is solid. This is a hot line that's compromised. We have a, an issue with this outlet, whereas on normal volt reading mode, it says we have a good outlet. So if you don't have a low Z meter, you can't tell typically that this outlet has issues. But now that we have a low Z meter, we can tell. Now, what is this caused by? Is this caused by a loose neutral or is it caused by a loose hot? Well, there are ways you could find out. And a low Z meter, what you could do is you could measure from ground to hot here and see what you get. In this case, we get 122 volts. So that tells us that the hot lead is okay. And by process of elimination, that tells us that there must be an issue with the neutral line, okay? This, this socket here works fine. It's just a traditional voltmeter plugged in. But if I put, plug this light in, it drops down to 2 volts. So we have a loose upstream connection either on neutral or the hot line here. So that's what the voltage pin is for. This voltage pin can tell us Normally you're going to read hot here, neutral here on the left. You're not going to get anything, which is which is what you would want, which is what you would expect. Okay. So now we got our voltage pin in there. If I plug this light in, then you can see the hot side goes dead. So this tells us we have a loose upstream connection on the hot side. If we had a loose upstream connection on the neutral side, then this would start beeping as soon as we plug the light in because the light, the low resistance of the light would pull neutral up to 120 volts. So normally a voltage pin is going to give us, on a good outlet, it's going to give us a reading on the hot like this, which it should, and no reading on the neutral because neutral should be zero volts, right? What happens is when neutral floats, and you put a load in here, and you only have a couple of volts difference between the two, by definition, neutral is going to be up close to 120 volts. So if that's the case, this should signal on the neutral side when I put the load in. 
So the voltage pin is indicating that neutral is getting pulled up to 120 volts when we plug this in. So that's a really good way a voltage pin can tell you if you have a, a loose upstream neutral with respect to this outlet that is causing this outlet to fail under load. That's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting and informative. If so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel.